This first poem is called All of Which Are American Dreams and the title is a reference to the Rage Against the Machine song Know Your Enemy. American dreams are ill-fitting shoes that fatten your heel to a blister. They appear as a figure that you try to greet from a long way off, to your call lost in the din of the city. He never answers anything. There are long cherished dreams that we colonise. Dreams are feathery seed pods which are born on the wind to catch on our sleeves in sterile hair. Dreams are hands inked by grimy photographs or newsprint. Dreams are blazing, the land burning of forest fires that blacken burnished harvest plots. Dreams are flies that buzz and glint their wings gold. They are dull vibrations entering your body through earth. Or they are a tinny song, the mumblings of a radio script heard underwater or from the breeze on a distant shore. American dreams are whirring at night to shore us up against doubt, the fears that are always fattening. Like Faye Ray, who screamed her way out of the script of King Kong, dreams are shrieking a mother bereft. Or they silently worm their way in the tunnelled earth, wheedling opens from the bars of every prison cell. Their dreams infect you like the fever for gold, though you know they'll never amount to anything. But above all, these dreams cultivate love, their plots small among the multitude longings of the colony, where we yearn for the men or women of our dreamlands, the passages and shafts of sleep where desire is born, and all the lovers burning in the new world geography. Dream like you and me of one slow, inevitable touch. My last Rochester. She's in the attic room in the Georgian house in the town that you knew but never liked. She waits for a bridegroom to arrive home when he will play the double bass, stretching the gentle bow across the strings as rain gathers in islands on the slanted windows. What did you wear that last time she saw you? The moleskin coat bought together. In her dreams it flaps its ravenous wings, beside the bead of your empty crow eye. She's writing after so long, sensible or not. She's not asking for anything, not ever. You're probably on your way somewhere, about to catch a bus or train, smelling of soap and holding a tattered rucksack. Or maybe you're only boiling roots in the kitchen, imagining the saucepan as a big top, silver-lidded over the performers. She remembers how sitting on the beaten-up sofa, you said, I'll have you for my own, and she believed you. Or there was the time off Taxim Square when you last punched her, your fist in her stomach, and afterwards you both made your way to the hotel in silence. She hadn't thought of you for a while until a friend of yours called and told her this, that you were travelling again, Paris or Naples, that you had found someone else, and this other woman was, at last, the second person in your life that you'd loved. And she wanted to ask, if the first person was her, or if it ever figured at all. Her last Rochester, I wanted to tell you, there isn't a day that goes by that she doesn't think of you. And yet for all that, it was never you at all. It was never you that she wanted. <laughs>